by grace you are saved. And I raise us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in the ages to come, you might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, to Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man will boast. May the Lord bless the reign of his word. Amen. You may be seated. Again, it's with a heavy heart I heard of what happened. I did extend call to Brother Ken, but he was not available to answer. There was a brother called Brother Peter who, who answered. That's after uh, Brother Patrick texted me of what happened. So I reached out. Um, it's, it's sad. But what can we do? This is the life we live. Um, whatever the circumstances might be, death is never something you can explain. It's something you just have to accept. So as the living, we also have to also take inventory of our time. It is in time like this, written in the Ecclesiastic by Solomon, in time like this is when we have to think of ourselves. Because sometimes we just keep going without thinking of ourselves. And the prophet taught us, even in this message, you know, he said, whatever you will not do before God, don't ever do it. In other words, God is always watching. So you don't say, you know, I'll do certain things because perhaps God doesn't know. The prophet said, whatever you cannot do before God, don't ever do it because you are always before God. You just read here in the book of Ephesians, you are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's not temporary, it's permanent. We are once lost in sin. All of us. You are never saved by your works. It's the gift of God. And so I want us to meditate upon his mercy. I want to talk about him. Not me, not you, not our circumstances, not your situation, not who you are. Him. He is the purpose of me being here. And he is the purpose of you being here. If it's not your purpose, then you're making a mistake. Your purpose of being here is him alone. And only in him do you have life. Without him, you don't have a life. It doesn't matter what you do. Without him, there's no life. Hallelujah. So, what is the meaning of mercy? You know, sometimes you talk about grace. You talk about mercy. They are all attributes of God. You see, in the light of the way that Abraham explained it, you see, grace is unmerited. But mercy is giving you something that you did not deserve. In other words, the penalty of sin is death. But by mercy, I give you life. You see, that's mercy. But grace is unmerited. In other words, it's a part of favor. By grace, which is a gift of God. Then you went to the dictionary to find out. Because you see, these words we use are English words. Is that right? So what did the English say about mercy? So mercy is compassionate. Kindly, forbearing, shown towards an offender. You see that? You've done something because the Bible says the soul that sinned, that soul must surely die. But the mercy of God extends life, forbearing, towards an offender. In other words, other person in one's power has compassion and had pity, benevolence. I love those words. Pity. If you're not seeking the pity of God, if you're coming to God with pomposity, you're going to fall. You're going to fall harder than you have risen. You have to seek pity. The prophet said he was never asking God for judgment. Even him. In this message, when he talked about himself, in the reflection of his family, and how he was a nobody. Nobody wanted to talk to him. Nobody wanted to even exchange greetings with him. But he said, but the mercy of 
God brought him thus far. And that mercy to the extent where somebody told Brother Graham, he said, you know you're in error. He said, God is going to punish you. But Abraham said to the person, in this message, he said, you know what? He said, let me tell you something. I will preach this message. I will believe God the same way I've always believed him. And if I go to hell, I will still be preaching it and believing it this way. He said, although I know I'm not going to hell. But that's what you say. But I'm telling you, he said, I'm not going to change. Because in my heart, I'm doing everything to please him. In my heart. So our heart is what God is judging. In your heart. Before you do something. Before you say something. In your heart. What are you thinking about? God is watching your heart. God is watching my heart. You are seeking pity and mercy from God. But you have to sanctify yourself. For David said, I put his law before me. And that was the example the prophet used in this message. Do you put his law, his book, before you? In other words, before you do anything, he's before you. Even your problem, you don't put your problem before you, you put his laws, his word before you. In your thought, his word before you. Hallelujah. You are seeking pity from him. Dictionary says also is the discretionary power of a judge to pardon. Oh, I love that. The discretionary power of a judge to pardon. Did the Lord not say, hallelujah, I will forgive your sin. I will put those sin in the sea of forgetfulness. We all remember them no more. Hallelujah. In the message, the presence of God, the prophet used that as an example. He gave the example of the man who you know that the, the daughters are having a party and, and he came to visit and, and he's always, you know, shouting a man and just having a jubilee by himself. So they don't want to be disturbed and they put him upstairs. They said, Daddy, you know, stay in the attic. And they gave him a, a book, a geography book, you know, nothing but seas and rivers. He said, just take a look at that and get yourself busy. Don't make too much noise until my guest is gone. So while the man was there and he's looking at this geography, and he saw a sea, and they were talking about the sea is so deep, they can't see the end of the sea, oh man. This man went into Jubilee. He said, that's where my sin is. God put my sin in the sea of forgetfulness where we cannot see them no more. He was shouting and jumping and the God has come and said, Daddy, what's the matter with you? You're just looking at geography. He said, yeah, I know. And I looked in here and I saw that the sea is so deep they cannot find the depth of the sea. And I wonder my sin, all of it. God said I put them in the sea of forgetfulness. By his mercy. Hallelujah. By his mercy. That's why the Bible said here. You were once in sin. Lost in sin. Desiring things of this world. But the mercy of God. Have made you and I. New creatures in Christ Jesus. The mercy of God. Hallelujah. The mercy of God. Blessed be his holy name. And I love the way Brother Abraham always preaches. Because he preaches in types. Everything he does for the most part is in type. And you got to catch the type he's trying to teach you. Hallelujah. So in this message, he preached in type, as always. He gave us the type of the mercy of God from the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, how that when Adam and Eve sinned, death was supposed to be their penalty. But the mercy of God brought the lamb that God killed and used his skin to cover them. That was his mercy. And he established the mercy seat at that time. Hallelujah. And that mercy seat is still there. For that's what John saw. Jesus was still sitting on the mercy seat. And when the ark of the covenant was constructed, a mercy seat was there. Hallelujah. Overlaid by gold and the angel. 
Because that mercy seat is telling of what is to come. But God in every age has always let his mercy go forward. In the time of Moses, it was the mercy of God that separated the Red Sea between the people of Israel and the Egyptians. It was his mercy that made a provision for them to pass through. Hallelujah. It was his mercy that brought the rock, which was water, for them to drink. It was his mercy. It was his mercy because they disobeyed him when they told Aaron, make us a call that we can see. But the mercy of God was there to see them through in the first Exodus. And the prophet said, the book of Ephesians is the book of Exodus. And in Exodus, we have to come out and go in. But the problem is some of us come out, we don't go in. Hallelujah. You have to come out of denomination and go into the message. You don't stay in denominational spirits. You go into the message. And let the message wash your eye from head to toe. And there will be nothing that will scare you on this earth. Why? Because you are the message yourself. You are the message. That is the purpose of the mercy of God. Is to establish a church with that spot and wrinkle this day. That is his mercy that ought to do it. That mercy was there in the time of Moses. Hallelujah. And the mercy of God was there even when Jesus came. Before he even came, he always provided a way of healing for the people. It was his mercy that introduced that rod. That present serpent, that if you look upon that serpent, you will surely not die. He was his mercy. Hallelujah. His mercy said, Look and live, my brother, my sister. He was his mercy of God. And the mercy of God provided the pool of Bathsheba. The pool of Bathsheba. That pool was where the angel of God, the pool of Bethesda, the angel of God come to trouble that pool. The prophet said it was the mercy of God. Hallelujah. And I love what Jesus talked about that pool. When the man that was sitting there for many years, and Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? You see, there's something that man talked to him. Listen. Do not be complacent about the word of God. That's what the man taught you and I. You know what he did? Jesus asked him a simple question. Do you want to be made whole? What did he say? Oh, how can I? You know, when the angel trouble the pool, there's so many people. You see now, before I get there, they're there already. So what did the man do? He now made a nice bed. He's comfortable. He made a nice bed. He's just relaxing himself there. Because he never knew he can, he can ever be made whole again. He's comfortable. There are so many people. I, I can't. You see, now I've prayed so long. God is not listening to me anymore. You see, you know, nothing is changing. You know, I don't think God is even there anymore. I, I don't know what's going on. That's in your mind. Hallelujah. But that's not the mind of God. God had a simple question. You want to be made whole? What's your desire? What do you want from me? God asked him. Instead of saying to God, yes, he said, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's so many people, uh, I don't know. Too many distractions. Uh, no, no, no. I can't get out. I can't go there. Look how many people. See, look at them. You know, before, once the angel come, see, because at that time, there's no prophet in the land to heal the sick. So God mercy brought the angel of God to trouble the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The question is simple. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to receive the mercy of God? The answer should be simple. Yes, Lord, I need it. Hallelujah. There should be no ex excuses. I can't do this. It is too much for me, Lord. You know, I, I can't run this race and finish it, Lord. You know, whenever I want to do something right, Lord, there are so many people, so distraction. Maybe your wife is distracting you, your husband, your job, whatever. You know, they're always before you, you know. Lord, I can't, I can't. God is saying, I didn't ask you that. I just ask you, do you want to come to heaven? Hallelujah. Do you want to make it to heaven? If your answer is yes, I will strengthen you. I will lead you through. I, the Lord, will do it. Not you. There's nothing you can do, brother and sister. Absolutely nothing. You can do nothing. Hallelujah. Neither can I. No man can help you. Neither can I. If God doesn't help you and I, we are lost. It's only his mercy and his grace. That's why I want to talk about him. Keep your eyes on him. 
Don't be distracted from nothing. Keep your focus on him. Hallelujah. Run your race because you got a race to run. Keep your focus on Jesus. The prophet said, look away to Jesus. He didn't say, look away to me. You see now, these days some people are confused even who the prophet is. These days some people want to worship the prophet. The prophet spoke against it. He said, that's what the people of Israel did in the same message. He said, the same life, the same rod that was killing them. They begin to worship that rod. And God told the prophet, take that thing and destroy it. Hallelujah. Destroy that rod. The same rod that were looking out to be healed when snake is biting them. They made God out of it. Hallelujah. And that's what every denomination has done. God has used men. Oh, strong men. The prophet talked about strong men. Men that God used in the past that could preach the gospel and people can even fall on the street from their voice. Hallelujah. They dedicated their life to the message of their day. God is looking for such people. God doesn't want a politician. He wants a believer of the word of God to push his word forward. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes, you know, you'll be minding your own business, but God will show you I am there. This is the tie I wore to work today. So I was wearing this tie. I went into my office. I went to see some of my staff. As I'm standing there, the security guard was looking at me. I don't know why he was looking at me, but I looked at him, and he's where he's not supposed to be. He's sitting very close to some of my clinicians in their office, and I have written inside, and no one should be there. So I looked at the man, and I said, I don't have the energy to talk to this guy. Let me just go to my office, because I'm, I'm just in a different spirit. And sometimes my staff will look at me and say, okay? I say, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm thinking about something. So I just sat there. The same man walked into my office, and I'm like, hmm, this guy is following me around now. So he said, uh, can I take a picture of your tie? I said, why? He said, uh, I want to show it to my wife. I said, okay. He said, oh, I'm not a Christian, he said. I'm Hindu. But my wife is a Christian. And, um, and my wife would love to see this. I said, okay. So I, I stretched this off. He took a picture. And I turned the back. I said, take a picture of the back. That's where I got it from. I said, uh, by the way, I own it. I said, um, if you buy this, I'll give you 40% off. I don't care. I'm not there to make too much money. Just make enough for myself. He said, oh. He said, okay. He said, I want to call my wife now. I said, okay. I said, do you like to read books? He said, yeah. I have my book in my office, the book I wrote. So I gave him a copy. I said, this is a book I wrote. You can give it to your wife. Your wife is a Christian. She will enjoy reading it. Because many people who read it have enjoyed reading it. He said, okay, okay. Now he put his wife on the phone. Put, him on, put her on speaker. So I said, God bless you, sister. She said, oh, God bless you. I said, oh, or oh, your husband tells me you're a Christian. Yeah. I said, you're invited to one day maybe visit us in Hackensack. So, oh, I would love to. I said, well, you're invited? I said, he said, maybe you can preach my husband to accept Jesus Christ. I've been telling him about Jesus Christ. Man is standing there. I said, well, your wife says she's been telling you. I said, maybe it's time for you to listen to your wife. Now I'm preaching in my, in my office to the, wife, to the husband and the wife is on the phone. I said, oh, man, I'm having a jubilee. Early morning. Hallelujah. You see, God can arrange something when you're not even thinking about it. You see, because he can do whatever he wants. He can bring whomever, wherever to hear his word. That man was so happy. He took the picture. He took everything. He said, I can't wait to get home. And the wife said, oh, I'm going to bring my children. I said, you're welcome to. That was the first person. The second person also walked in. One of my staff. She goes, her name is Lisa. She goes, oh. Oh, Mr. Murphy, can I take a picture of this time? I'm like, you're the second person. So oh, my husband would love to see it. He's a good Christian. He's a Christian musician. He would love to wait to play music. I'm like, okay. Here is the picture. Hallelujah. What is preaching them? My cloth is preaching. My cloth. I didn't preach. My cloth is preaching. You can preach the gospel on your character. Even the clothes you're wearing. Sometimes you think it's when you preach a big message. No, you lost it. Your life will preach harder than anything I can say here over a particular any pastor, any preacher. Your life. Your life. The words you use. Your character. Your attitude. The prophet said, don't jump higher than even your testimony. The mercy of God will help you to see these things. Hallelujah. The way you react to people. The way you talk. The way you dress. We preach the gospel more than anything else. Hallelujah. 
when you're seeking to serve God, he will make a way, one way or the other. I'm, I'm listening to the message I'm going to, I'm going to walk. The message was playing from my house to my office. I'm in the spirit. What did God do? Bring people to see, hear the word. That's what he does. When you create an environment, you don't wait until you come here and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a innocent believer. No, wherever you are, preach the gospel by your life, by the things you do, by your thought, by your action, by your character. Hallelujah! Let's serve in the name of the living God. Give me Romans 9.15. We're going to pray. And I'm going to be doing what the prophet taught us. Prophet, actually, in this message, he wanted to preach 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And I love it. And I'm not going to try to do that. I've been saying that. When I come here, mark my time. If I preach more than 40 minutes, raise your hand. Hallelujah. I will stop. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't want to preach more than 40 minutes here. Not anymore. Hallelujah. Give me uh, uh, Romans 9.15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. He chose you and I. We didn't choose ourselves. He chose you to have mercy on you. Hallelujah. It's not what you have done. It is by his choosing on whom he chooses to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, he said compassionate God. Give me Deuteronomy 431. Deuteronomy 431. He said, compassionate God. Let's talk about him for a little bit. Then we pray. It's only for the one. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which is swear unto them. Hallelujah! Who is our fathers of faith? The message of the hour. Malachi 4 5. He has come to bring back the faith of the fathers to the children. That's a promise he made. It's a covenant he made. To bring the faith of the fathers back to the children. Hallelujah. That's my portion. That's your portion. That's the covenant that you and I have today. Do I have the faith of the fathers in me? Hallelujah. Do you act like Peter? Do you act like Paul? These are our fathers of faith. He's bringing it back to the children today. That's what the messenger came to do. That is his message. Hallelujah. Give me Luke 178. He said, tell that message for God. Luke 178. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high had visited us. Hallelujah. He has visited us. The pillar of fire came to visit us through his mercy. He promised to come back. He promised to redeem himself. He revealed himself. The son of man revealing himself in a son of man. And he visited us. And we behold the presence of God. And when you hear that tape and hear the prophet going, you say, Lord Jesus, he's talking about me. Hallelujah. He's displaying my character. The message is for me. Hallelujah. And I cannot away from what is mine. Blessed be the name of the living God. Titus 3.5. He saved us, not on deeds, but on mercy. Titus 3, 5. Hallelujah. He saved us, not by works of righteousness, which you have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration. Hallelujah. To regenerate. What does that mean? It's to bring back what was. Hallelujah. It's almost like to redeem, to regenerate, to bring back what was. Not to replace, it's to regenerate, bring back the original position. Our position in Christ Jesus was what Adam had before the fall. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Renewing of the Holy Ghost. His mercy is upon generation after generation. Luke 150. His mercy is upon every generation, including mine and yours. Luke 150. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Hallelujah. So it was not just upon William Marion Abraham, my beloved prophet, it's upon me, it's upon you. Hallelujah. Because this day we are in the land of the living. Hallelujah. The messenger has come and gone, but the message lives on. Hallelujah. He said, one day I'll be gone, but the tape will play on. 
the message will go on, the voice will go on, and there will be a people to hear that voice and echo that voice and obey that voice and become that voice. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, blessed be his holy name. Oh, death has nothing to do with it. Hallelujah! When I go, it has nothing to do with it. Who I am has so much to do with it. That when I go, or where I go, is who I am. If you are in Christ Jesus, he doesn't see you anymore. He sees himself. Hallelujah. You are a new creature. He wouldn't see me. He will see himself. I'm a reflection of him. You are a reflection of him. So where you go has got nothing to do with it. It's who you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the God who has made us to be born again through mercy. First Peter. First Peter 1 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his abundant mercy. See, the prophet said, if he's just rich in goods, you will not be good enough for me. If he's just rich in wealth, you will not be good enough for me. Although he is rich in those things. But he's rich in mercy. Hallelujah. And mercy has caught you and I. It is his mercy that has saved you and I. But this mercy, according to his abundant mercy, he's begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I was speaking last Sunday on Ephesians. How that the book of Joshua was the Ephesians of the Old Testament. How it was a book of redemption. And redemption has two different parts. Come out of and enter into. First, you have to come out. Some people want to bring the world with them. But you've got to come out of the world to go into Christ. You have to come out of unbelief to enter into faith. There cannot be one thing in your way. To really have genuine faith, you must absolutely leave everything that is contrary to the word of God behind to enter into faith. And that was the book of the Ephesians of the Old Testament, Joshua, where Moses represented the law, could not save no one, but grace could. And here, Joshua is the same word like Jesus, Jehovah Savior. And now then, we find out that we have come to another Ephesians, another Ephesus now, where that in our intellectual denomination and so forth, and all of our educational program has come to its Jordan. Then we must have an Ephesians again. We must have an Exodus to come out and to go into for the rapture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sisters, it's the same message I say. Hallelujah. You can find it, sisters. What are you doing over there? Get busy, sisters. Come on, let's go. You can find it. I gave you the date. 1965, January 19. If you two sisters are playing, then one person has to sit there. I want you to notice something. Apostle, rather Paul, who now made mention of this now, has he quickened who were once dead? You, who had he quickened? Who were once dead, dead in sin and transgressions, walking after the things of this world, desire of the flesh, fulfilling the desire of the mind. Should the mind have its own desire? Be careful now. What caused this change, you see? What caused it? From one thing being there to quicken, quicken means made alive. There was a change from dead unto life. There is no order. There is no order there to life. A man, if he was dying physically and could be healed physically, that would be a great thing. But nothing so great as when he is spiritually dead and God has quickened him to life. Amen. Amen. You once in times you were past dead. 
you were dead. Even many here tonight, see, one time can look back and know that you were dead. But now, why aren't you dead tonight? As you were dead, you deserve to be that way because you was a sinner. But God, who is rich in mercy, that's the thing. God, who was rich, all these things that we were. But God, that made the change right there. God, who is rich in mercy. Oh, I am so glad for that. He being rich in mercy, if he was just rich in money, if he was just rich in material, which he is, but yet the greater thing is being rich in mercy. Oh, what a great word that is. How that we were once dead. And we were speaking of that. Hallelujah. Once dead, but has he quickened. Hallelujah. It's almost 10 o'clock. We shall stop. If anything, we continue on Sunday by his grace. Let's serve you the name of the living God. You love him? You love him? You love him? Let's be on our feet. Hallelujah. God, who is rich in mercy, he made a way. The same way he made a way in the Old Testament in the days of Moses, he made a way of escape. And through the prophets, you have the judges, you have the prophets, he still made a way. Even before Christ came, he made a way in the pool of Bethesda. Any sinner, any sick person that was able to jump in there is made whole. But then, after the pool of Bethesda, came the Lord himself. Hallelujah. When he came down on earth, his purpose is to do what? Is to redeem. Is to bring back to original position. What was lost? We lost our position by sin. But his mercy would not let him sit still and watch his children that he made his own image. When he looks down every day and sees your condition, He's mindful of everything that pertains to you. You have to be sure and know that. And therefore, you are grounded in faith to understand that he's in control. Whatever comes and goes, just leave it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His mercy is forever. His mercy is without end. But there's coming a day. There's coming a day when that mercy he shows. And he said he's not willing that any will perish. But that all we come to repentance. God is not willing that any will perish. But that all we come to repentance. But we know that all will not come to repentance. Because he said, I will show mercy on whom? I want to show mercy. Hallelujah. But if he has shown mercy to you, have you accepted that mercy? If you accepted it, then your life ought to change. Your thought ought to change. Your character has to change. Your desire has to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to walk where he tells you to walk. You have to do the things that pleases him. Hallelujah. Because you know his eye sees everything. He is the unseen eyes. You don't see him, but he can see. He can see your thoughts. He, he was able to bring the prophet on the scene. And the prophet can look at a person and tell them exactly what they are thinking. To let you know that that word is true. A man like you and I can look at another human being and tell them exactly what they're thinking. God did that as a way of offering to show you and I that power is still here. That power is still here with the church. But the church has forgotten about it. They have gone in their ways. They have gone in their culture, in their tradition. The things of men, the things of the world. They are forsaking the very word that God has given us. And this day, any church, any person who can just extend their hand, the hand of Jesus is there to hold them back. We are living in the end time. I was driving to work. I was listening to news and I heard a 10-year-old girl, 10-year-old, 10, was pregnant. It was on the news yesterday. 10-year-old was raped, became pregnant. And she has to go across the state where she is to get her abortion. You can Google it and see it. I said, Lord, 10 year old is pregnant and had to do abortion. We're 
at the end time. This is the science the prophet told us. A 10 year old. Imagine being a mother. Be wise. Wiser than the serpent. Be careful. Because the accuser is roaring. Letting you think nothing is happening. But the world is falling apart. If the world is not falling apart, then the message is not true. The message preached, the world is falling apart. It's not coming together. Hallelujah. So what shall the people of God do? Is stand. Every child of God must stand. Take your position in Christ Jesus. Don't care about what comes and goes. Take your stand in Christ Jesus. And march forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take up your cross, say the Lord, and follow me. Hallelujah. He will lead us until the end. Do not let your heart be troubled. Oh, you're going to hear things are going to happen. There's going to be things happening. The sick sin will unleash, but will not be here. But you'll see the preamble. More than 2,000 demons were released from the Euphrates on the sixth seal. Hallelujah. We have images that are unseen on the sixth seal. But the pride of Jesus are not supposed to be here. But you'll see the squeeze that will cause the rapture. That squeeze will be things that are not comfortable. If this world is being comfortable, just like that man at the pool of Bethesda, he was comfortable. He was not making a move anymore. He lays on his bed. Oh, I can't go forward. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to march on tonight? When you come to prayer, my friends, when you finish prayer, go with something. Go with strength. Hallelujah. Encourage your faith. Lift up yourself. Higher than where you were when you walked in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that is the only way you're going to make it. You have to bring your faith up. Hallelujah. Remember, John was told, come up, up higher. Hallelujah. And I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. John had to come up to see them. Hallelujah. They were not on this periphery. John was told, come up higher. And I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. But when John came up, he was shown the new Jerusalem. Like a city had done for the bridegroom. After the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the city on the high. And the world has to look at that city to see. You are the light of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the house God has made for himself. When the bride goes marching on. That's the new Jerusalem coming down. The bride and the bridegroom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a glorious sight that will be. Oh, God is not going to build what walls and, and blocks and you know you build this thing because of temperature and because your body is still with this you know elements of the earth if I, my body is not the element of the earth what do I need that for hallelujah that's why Christ said what house will you be for me say the Lord hallelujah but a house have I built for myself and that was the body of the Lord hallelujah 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 whatever it is God is making for us to be in I'm still going to enjoy it Hallelujah. But I know it will not be based on the atmosphere or the temperature because I don't have to feel cold anymore. Hallelujah. I have a body that will not decay. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray, Brother Ken's son was born again and made it on yonder. Hallelujah. I pray. Hallelujah. 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 Bless him in the name of the living God. That's my prayer that every child will be born again because you don't know what day you're living, friends. You don't know. Hallelujah. You don't know. Neither do I. But one thing you have to know, you must be ready. Hallelujah. You have to be ready. Hallelujah. The prophet didn't know. But I, I, I believe that Abraham knew something was about to happen because, you know, he stopped the car and told uh, you know, told the little girl to join, join the father before he went on now to meet the car coming across. So somehow, you know, the Lord must have shown him something. But you know, throughout the message, he talks about he's been eighty year old. He never lived to be eighty. 
Never need to see the old age where, where Billy Paul and Joseph were carried, Joseph carried the Bible and Billy Paul going with him. He never lived to see those days. But I believe as a prophet of God, God must have shown him in his time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he was ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, you have to be ready. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready whenever that time will come? But the mercy of God will see your night through. Just pray tonight for his mercy. Hallelujah. Approach him tonight as nothing. Empty yourself to him. Just take a few minutes now going to prayer. Don't tell him how good you are or what you have done for him. No. Empty yourself. Tell him, Lord, I'm empty. I have nothing. Fill me up, Lord, as we go into prayer. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Lord Jesus, my prophet even said how he came to the church and apologized to them for the things he was doing wrong. And he said, I empty myself before you when he preached that message, the presence of God. And he said, every child of God must be able to do that. Lord, I come to you tonight asking for mercy. I'm not asking for your judgment, Lord. I'm not worthy. There's nothing in me that would desire your judgment, Lord. If you judge me based on who I am, Lord, I can't stand before you, Lord. But I come, Lord, because you are rich in mercy. I come, Lord, pleading my case for mercy. I come presenting my family for mercy. Presenting my church for you, Lord, for mercy, Lord. May your mercy that you're so rich in, Lord, be entrusted upon us, Lord, and shine upon us, Lord Jesus. In this journey of life, Lord, we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds, Lord. One is here today and tomorrow is gone. Just like a flower that blooms by day and by afternoon and by day. In evening time it's without away. And so is man. That's why Job said, Job said, Oh, cause be the day that I was born. Oh, that the earth might open up and swallow me. Until your wrath is passed from me, Lord. Oh, he remembered the day of his birth and the trials of his death. But then you came down to let him know, Job. Oh, where were you? Where were you when the sons and daughters of God shouted for joy before the foundation of this world? Dear Jesus, there's nothing in my hand I bring. There's nothing in my hand I bring. There's nothing in my thought I bring, Lord. There's nothing in my understanding I bring, Lord. But I come to you empty and burn. Empty and burn, fill me up, Lord. Help me, dear Jesus. I lift up my hand up high, Lord, for you to catch it, Lord. Help me through the journey of life. Help your children, Lord. Hear their cry tonight, Lord. May you hear our cry, Lord. Father, we remember, Lord, the family again of our brother, Lord. I can't imagine the pain, Lord. They're going through, Lord. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, dear yeah, Jesus. And who can heal the broken hearted? Who can strengthen the broken hearted? Who is he that can heal? Heal and come from the Lord. My God, my Lord. My El Shaddai. Omnipotent God. The ancient of days. In the of the body. The prime of the star. We stand on the threshold of mercy. We knock at the door of mercy. May you open, Lord Jesus. May the mercy seat speak for us all. May you come now, Lord. As those angels you told Moses to lay the angels' wings above the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant, Lord. May you now stretch forth your wings, Lord. Wings of an eagle, Lord. And over, over. Over, over, Lord. Over, over your children. 
Come on, kneel on. Come on, kneel. Show me again, Jesus. The enemy will see me not, Lord Jesus. Show on your church. Show on the bride. Show on your children. The enemy will see us not. Come on, us and the mother eagles, Lord. Come on, your wings, Lord. Your mighty outstretched hand of Jesus. The mighty outstretched hand of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. May the blood of Jesus cover each and every one of us. May the blood of Jesus cover us, Lord Jesus. Oh, the blood I speak more excellent. And the blood of Abraham. The blood of Zoe. The life of God. The life of God. Jehovah, the mighty conqueror. I am weak, but thou art strong. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us in this journey of life. If you do not help us, Lord, we will perish. I cry like Peter when he was sinking. Help me, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. If you don't help us, Lord, we will sink. Oh, sink. It will not be there, Lord. I want to sink. Your outstretched hand. You say to Peter, hold my hand. Lord Jesus, I stretch out my hand. May you hold my hand. May you hold my hand. With every eyes closed, you can just stretch out your hand. With every eyes closed, nobody opening their eyes. If you just want Jesus to hold your hand, you just stretch out your right hand up. Say, so, Lord Jesus, please hold my hand. Please hold my hand, Lord. Please hold my hand, Lord. And lead me through the valley of death. If I back to the valley of death, Lord, I fear no evil, Lord. I stretch forth my hand, Lord. So I hold my hand. As you hold Elijah, when it was time for him, Lord, he was so tired and weary, Lord. He could go no more. But you were there to hold him until the end. We shall not cross each other alone. A Jesus, son of the living God. Jesus, son of the living God. The only begotten son of God. The boy that God made for himself. Jesus, the only name. The name above all name. On the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee is about. Every time we confess. Jesus Christ is the Lord. My God, my Lord. My hand is up, Lord. May you hold me with your mercy. Your tender mercy hand. May you catch me, Lord. As I fall. May you help me, Lord. Help your church, Lord. My brothers and sisters, they need you, Lord. Come down, my Lord. Visit every family, every heart. My God, my Lord. You that brought us together for fellowship, you will see us through the end, Lord. The outstretched hand of Jesus. Jesus, my Lord. Jesus, my Lord. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. I will die. With many tongues, Lord. Many look at his sepulchre. And Mary wept. Where is the body of my Lord? Said Mary. And you call her Mary. And she turned. She said, Oh, Rabona. Rabona. You say, Touch me not. And go tell my brothers. I have risen. He has risen. He has risen. Thank you. Thank you. Glorious in death. Glorious in battle. Mighty Jesus. Undefeated Jesus. The God of Jesus. There's none like you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for this life. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thanksgiving, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
Amen. 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 Spirit, I know that uh, the person of that young man hit home, especially the Kenyan, you know, families. No one comes to this country to bury a child. It's always a prayer for the children to bury the parents. I know when my mom was here, whenever I feel certain way, she will discourage me. 
She said, no, don't say that. Because you're going to bury me, not me burying you. So I know it's hard. For missing believers as well. Beside the Kenyan family, missing believers. Seeing these things is hard. It's troubling. Especially when you know the children were brought up in the church. As their father is a pastor and has been laboring in the field for a long time. Whatever comes and goes. So when you become a pastor, you know what pastors go through. So I can't imagine what he's going through. But it is the time to pray for him. That's what you ought to do. That's what the prophet taught us. Prayer changes everything. You can pray for somebody without even them knowing. That's what believers do. Our weapon is prayer. If I don't have prayer, I don't have anything. Prayer is my strength. And when I cry, he hears me. Sometimes I pray and I lose my mind. Then I know he's there. Sometimes I pray, cry too much, I can't even breathe. It's true. So sometimes I have to watch myself. Because when I pray certain times, I start crying, I can't breathe. You have to let go. You have to surrender. But you're not alone. So what you owe, but again, Pastor Ken, is your prayers. For God to heal them, and show them a way to continue the journey. We all have to run this race, one way or the other. Nobody knows how we're going to end up. We don't know. But one thing is sure, Christ will be there waiting if you run your race well. Amen? Amen? So let's take the name of Jesus with us as we depart. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you.
God. Father God, may heaven open tonight, Lord, and visit the broken hearted, Lord. May heaven open tonight, Lord, and visit the broken hearted family, Lord. For your name's sake, Lord. Father God, open the windows of heaven, Lord, and look upon your children tonight, Lord. May your mercy be sufficient for us, Lord. We thank you.